Football season is finally back, and in the last few years, we have seen hit after hit and thought, damn, how does the head survive that? Hey fans, Trace here hitting it for D News. Sports injuries happen. Part of getting out there and getting into the mix of things inevitably involves coming in contact with other humans and getting hurt in the process. Some injuries last a few weeks and others, like concussions, can last a lifetime. The hard hits in American football, soccer, ice hockey, and rugby have drawn criticism from parent groups, doctors, and professionals alike, each claiming the head injuries sustained are permanently damaging to their players. A concussion is a type of brain injury. They occur when an impact to the head causes the brain to bounce off the inside of the skull. Not surprisingly, the brain doesn't like being jostled. Doing so too often can really damage the tissues on the brain's surface. The impact of the brain into the inner walls of the skull can cause permanent damage, cell destruction, swelling, and even death. It's pretty serious, you guys. When an NFL football player makes a big hit, the brain keeps moving even though the body has stopped, not unlike a person in a car during a crash. The NFL is beginning to address concussion concerns by implementing new rules, fines, and even suspending some players who hit too hard. In soccer, head injuries occur almost as much as in the NFL. If a kicked ball traveling 100 kilometers per hour hits a player in the head, or if a player hits another player at full speed, concussions happen. Heading the ball properly, however, will not cause a concussion, according to a 1993 study by the National Institutes of Health. So get out there, head the ball, people. When a player sustains many concussions in their career, their brain starts to shrink and break down from the damage. Repetitive concussions fall under the set of brain affiliations called CTE, or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. The NFL has been struggling with former players being diagnosed with dementia, depression, and motor difficulties due to CTE that some claim was caused by their play in the league. Though recently, a professor at Loyola University in Chicago said that he believes these claims are overblown. Regardless, the number of concussions is increasing year over year, from 5.4 per week in 2009 to more than nine per week in 2012. Even helmets aren't gonna help that much because they protect the skull, not the brain. Adding a helmet is the physics equivalent of adding a bunch of bubble wrap to the bumper of your car. When you hit something on the outside, whatever is inside will still hit the dashboard. We can't restrain the brain. Unfortunately, according to the University of Washington, there's not a lot we can do about concussions. The NFL has partnered with GE and will spend 50 million in the upcoming season to research the problem, but seriously, unless we can add a seatbelt to the brain, we might just have to slow down and not hit so hard. Do you have any ideas of how we could prevent concussions? Share your thoughts in the comments and be sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more D News. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm Trace.